out here right now. We're about three weeks, four weeks into this whole COVID-19 thing. And hopefully every one of you guys are staying safe. You know, I know I've kind of mentioned it a couple times in the videos before, you know, the last couple of weeks, but hopefully, you know, everybody you guys know, hopefully nobody's out there dealing with this. Um, hopefully all you essential workers who are actually still out there having to get out and deal with people and everything like that are staying safe and staying healthy. Um, me personally, I've still got to work, so I'm out there every day and it, I try to stay as healthy as possible. And luckily I've got a pretty good immune system. Um, you know, all the reports are saying that this thing could have actually been around a lot longer than they think. And we're in the group that we actually kind of wonder if we didn't get it. We had a deal where like my mother-in-law got really sick and ended up going to the hospital. My son ended up having to go and get on an inhaler and everything like that. But we all ended up getting pretty sick and we think that, you know, we actually may have caught it back then. It's kind of weird because, you know, you hear so much conflicting information out there about, you know, what it is and what it isn't and what's good and what's not good, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And, you know, it's it's so much that you can't weed through it all. But, you know, bottom line, hopefully everybody's out there staying safe, staying healthy, not getting it themselves. So we're going to be getting into actually getting out there and changing those brake pads. Now, I know this is something that I was supposed to do a few weeks ago, but it's, you know, been put on the back burner. It was decent weather. I got out and rode. Um, this week is actually cold, rainy. It's been like 40s and 50s. So it was the perfect time to get back out there and get it done. Now, this will be a pretty quick video. There's not really a whole lot to changing the brakes. And we're going to be replacing the pads and the stock springs and shims with OEM parts. Now, there are a lot of different options out there. And you can choose aftermarket or you can go OEM, whatever you want. And the reason that I chose OEM myself is these brakes have never been changed. And this bike is, you know, 17. 18 years old. So that in itself is a testament to me on how well these pads are going to last. You know, you hear a lot of people say that they change their brakes and within two or three years, they're having to do it again. You know, and yeah, you might get a lot better performance out of them. I'm not out there racing on curves. I'm not doing track day on the Warrior or nothing like that. So these are going to work plenty good for me. And I'll be leaving links to a few different brake pads down below so you can be sure to check everything out and kind of make that decision for yourself. Um, let's go ahead. Let's get out there and let's change these brake pads out, guys. going to be a pretty quick straightforward video there's not really a whole lot to changing the brakes but the main thing that we're actually going to do is give you the torque values of everything show you the tolerances of actually when you need to change those brake pads and show you the actual process of getting it off sinking that piston and then reinstalling it to the actual bracket now the first thing that we're going to do is remove the two 12 millimeter bolts here that are holding our caliper to our actual bracket now once we've taken out the bolts we can go ahead and actually pull that caliper off and kind of just set that back to the side. Now, once you've got your caliper off, you can actually take and just kind of slide your pads out. Now, the back of these pads actually have shims on them and your bracket here is gonna have a couple of springs as well. Now, it's usually a good idea to replace both shims and your springs whenever you're doing this. And, you know, 16, 17 years, that's usually a pretty good lifespan. Now, to pop that spring out, all we're gonna do is you've got tabs on both sides. You just kind of take it and just kind of twist it up that way. And then this back one will just kind of twist out to the front and then that'll actually remove your springs. Now, like I said, you'll actually want to replace both of these springs and both shims on the back side of these pads before we install the new ones. Now, once you've got your pads off, you can actually check the thickness of them to make sure that they need to actually even be replaced. Now, you can wear these down to where they're about 0.03 inches, which actually works out to about a 32nd of an inch, um, 0.8 millimeters. And while you've got them off, you can actually take and look at them and make sure that they're wearing evenly as well on both sides so that you know that you don't have too much pressure coming from one and not enough on the other. Now to reinstall the springs, we're going to do just the opposite way that we took them out. We're just going to tuck them in the top and then take those pieces and kind of pull them up over the bottom. Now you want to make sure that you get both sides front and back actually tucked into place. Now from there you can actually take your pads and reinstall the shims on them as well and then you can take those and just slide them into place. Now once we've gotten our springs, shims, pads and everything back reinstalled onto the bracket, we want to come back up to our caliper, remove the nipple over the bleeder and then take a small hose and actually stick it over the top of that. 
Now, if you've actually done your scheduled maintenance and gone through every few years and replaced all your brake fluid, you will actually wanna do this step because you might not have enough room in that reservoir for the fluid to actually back up into it. Now, when doing this, you may actually wanna take the other end of this hose and stick it into a container to catch any kind of brake fluid that may actually come out. Now, all we're gonna do is take and crack that bleeder screw open. And then we will depress that piston with our fingers. And you can see brake fluid actually coming out of it. Now, once we've got that piston fully depressed, we wanna take and actually close that bleeder screw off. And that will actually give us enough room to get those new brake pads inside there. And then you can just take and remove the end of that hose off, reinstall your nipple, and then you should be able to take that caliper and actually slide it back up over the bracket there. Now from there, we're gonna come back in, actually reinstall our two bolts. Now once we've got everything back in place, we're gonna tighten our bleeder screw down to 4.3 foot-pounds, and then we'll tighten our two actual bolts that are holding our caliper to our bracket down to 19 foot-pounds. Now from there, we're pretty close to done. We're gonna come back up to our brake pedal, depress it a few times, make sure that we build up pressure in that line again, and check our brakes and make sure that they're actually working. Now if they do feel a little spongy, you may actually have to bleed the lines. You may have actually somehow gotten air inside there. Hopefully the hose is gonna kinda of keep anything like that from happening. Now one last thing that you'll wanna be sure to do is check the fluid level on your brake reservoir and make sure that you're still good there. Now one quick tip that you could do while you're here is if you actually take your finger and rub it along that rotor and use just the natural oil from your fingers, you can take and spin that tire and tell if you're rubbing on anything on the inside of that caliper. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully this video was able to walk you through the process of getting out there and changing out those brake pads. And next week we're gonna be focusing on adjusting the foot controls. Every once in a while you run into a problem whether you're installing a new exhaust or whether it's just the comfort of it and you want to get those adjusted and there's a really quick easy way to do it. Now while we're at it we're going to be showing you how to also adjust the rear brake light switch so that you don't run into a problem where you adjusted those foot controls and you're not engaging the brake light. So be sure to be watching for that. Now I want to show you really quick I got new vinyl in and this stuff has me excited, guys. This is actually the color that I thought the bike was going to be when I went to actually wrap it before, and man, I am 10 times more excited about the color of this stuff. So I'm going to be installing this. I'm just waiting on, I've got one more color that I'm waiting on. Um, it's gonna be yellow, and I'm going to do little yellow accents on it, and I think it's it's gonna look good. And I'm just waiting on that and the edge sealer. And once I get those in, I will be getting out and wrapping that. So hopefully I can show you guys that here either next week or the week afterwards. And like I said, after seeing this, this is what I was going for. You know, this has me a lot more excited than the other one did. So guys, once again, stay safe, stay healthy. Other than that, we'll see you next time.